In this video, we're going to look at questionnaires. So here's some do's. Firstly, ensure that your questions are clear and concise. If you need a time scale, make sure you include one. So for instance, how many times do you go to the gym each week? Without the each week part, it's not very clear. If you're using option boxes, ensure they cover all possibilities. For instance, how many times do you go to the gym each week? Zero, one, two, three, four or more. So there you've got every single option covered there. Okay, so here's some don'ts. So try not to ask personal questions. For instance, who do you vote for? A lot of people wouldn't want to answer that question because it's private. How old are you? Well, if you ask someone how old they are, again, they might not want to answer that. But if you included some option boxes for that question, they may be more likely to answer. Don't try to influence the person responding by asking leading questions. So don't you agree that Bath is a beautiful city? Well, that's a leading question. It's influencing the person answering to agree with you. If you're using option boxes, ensure they don't overlap. So for instance, how much pocket money do you receive? Zero to five pound, zero to 10 pound, 10 to 20 pound. So here we've got a few problems. First of all, this box and this box both cover from zero, zero to five and zero to 10. So if you had one pound, you could tick that box or that box. So there's an overlap there. Also, there's an overlap here between zero to 10 pound and 10 to 20 pound. If you had 10 pound, would you tick that box or that box? So make sure that you, whenever you're including option boxes, they don't overlap. Okay, we're now going to have a look at some exam questions. Someone wants to find out how much people spend using their mobile phone. He uses this question on a questionnaire. How much do you spend using your mobile phone? And he's got three option boxes, £1 to £5, £5 to £10, and £10 to £15. And this is write down two things that are wrong with this question. There's actually quite a few things wrong with this question. Firstly, the question itself, it says, how much do you spend using your mobile phone? Now, it doesn't include a time scale. It doesn't say a day, a week, a month, a year. So it needs a time scale. So that's one thing that's wrong with it, a time scale. Okay, and what we just talked about there, you would write down in a sentence. Okay, so you need a time scale. Next thing that's wrong with it is in the option boxes. Um, it doesn't start at zero. So anything from zero up to 99p is not included. So that's one thing that's wrong with it. So uh, it doesn't include zero. So mentioning from zero pound to 99p wouldn't be included, okay? Something like that there. Also, there's an overlap, okay? So a third thing that would be wrong with it is the overlap. For instance, if it was if you were to spend five pound on your mobile phone, you could take this box and this box. Or if you were to spend 10 pound, you could take this box and this box. So mentioning the overlaps. And also, there's no option for more than 15 pound. So more than 15 pound because it goes uh, £10 to £15, but doesn't have £15 in a penny or anything more, £20 and so on. Okay, so there's four things that are wrong with this question. It doesn't have a time scale. It doesn't have anything below £1. There's overlaps in the boxes, and also it doesn't have any option for more than £15. Okay, then it says, design a better question for his questionnaire uh, to find out how much people spend using their mobile phone. You should include uh, some response, bo uh, response boxes. So... The question itself wasn't too, uh, wasn't that bad, except for it didn't have a time scale. So, how much do you spend on your mobile phone each month? So there we've got the same question, but we just added the time scale on. Now let's look at our response boxes. So we're going to go this time from naught to five pound. The next box, we're now going to go from a five pound and a penny to ten pound. As you can see there, there's no overlap because it's got from zero pound to five pound, and then it's got from five pound and a penny up to ten pound. The next box, from ten pound and a penny to fifteen pound, and then we could just say the next finally fifteen pound and a penny. Plus, so or more that you could just write that as more than fifteen pound a penny or something like that, okay? And then every single options count are covered. So, for instance, they could take this box for less than five or five pound and less. This box for five pound a penny up to ten pound. This box from ten pound a penny up to fifteen pound. And anything more than fifteen pound a penny could be this box, but something like that. Okay. And finally, here's another question, and it says. Um, do you agree that, wind turb uh, that the wind turbine will be a disaster for our village? Yes, definitely, and no. And it says, give two distinct criticisms of Ben's question. 
So again, you'd answer these questions in sentences, but we're just going to look briefly at what, what could, what's wrong with this. So first of all, anything that starts off with, do you agree the wind turbines will be a disaster for our village? But you can clearly see that the question includes the, the person who's writing the question's own opinion. The person who's writing the, que uh, the question has said that the, the wind turbine's going to be a disaster for the village. So it's a leading question, so it's leading. Okay, uh, and then you'd write, write that down because it's trying to influence the person answering the question to agree with them. Then the next part then would then be all the option boxes. You've got yes, definitely, and no. Um, there's no sort of middle ground. Uh, you know, yes, definitely, no. Maybe what about no opinion? Something like that. Okay, so maybe include a box for no opinion, or uh, something along those lines. 